This is a video podcast from the Canadian Centre for Architecture. The following is the final of three parts of the CCA's Urgency event, held for the first time in June 2007 with Rem Kuhlhaus and Peter Eisenman, who are joined in conversation by Phyllis Lambert. That was, of course, absolutely fabulous. And uh, I wore my black and white socks because I didn't want to have to choose between partial figure and icon. Uh, There are other solutions that people here in Montreal know about, and I just want to mention them before I get Rem and Peter talking. And that is this tremendous ability to bring a whole sections of the city together to create places uh, that are uh, partial figures uh, in the Quartier International de Montréal and various other things. That's a a special Montreal thing that I would like people to start understanding. It's just uh, incredible. We do not have, luckily, star figures here, but we have some wonderful architects. But now, between Peter and um, Rem, I don't think there's anything to choose. I think that one of the things that we care about about at the CCA is this discourse, this possibility. There are so many possibilities. There are so many limited possibilities and also a very huge amount of possibilities, both both ways. And uh, I, I think that I would like to ask, since Peter had his... Uh, come back at Rem. I would like to ask Rem if he has any comments that he'd like to make in relationship to what Peter had to say. Uh, n- not, not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no. He's working on Peter. I, I, w- I want to say that I, I think, um, you know, neither of us would be here if we, we didn't respect one another. Uh, I have the most respect for Rem of any architect practicing. I have to state that from the beginning. Um, but I think the, there is an enormous difference in, in how we, each of us, have conceptualized our work from the beginning, a positive difference, and that is Rem has always thought of, of the big scale, of the urban scale, and I have been unable in, 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 a, in a real way to conceptualize the urban scale the way Rem has. I mean, his projects and and all of the projects that he showed today were dealing with the problematic of the urban scale. While we were doing a six-building complex, and and to me it it is (laughs) a a challenge to do six buildings, as Richard Meyer found out at the Getty, Um, um, uh, we're still focused on the, the internal small-scale manipulations. And to me, that's what I'm good at. And I know that I'm good at work, working at small scale. And I know Rem, I didn't say Rem wasn't good at small scale, but he's certainly really one of the best at, the, at, at large scale. So I think there's, there are two complementary possibilities that I think, and I don't think there's, there's a disagreement among us. No, I, I, I totally agree. No. But I, I think that um, we, we've been a number of times together in discussions like this, and, and kind of sooner or later, it was all, always about who we are, what the difference is. Uh, and I think that at, at this point, we should really try to talk about other things. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I think that the word urgency is a real, really interesting uh, word to introduce, particularly you know, at your uh, age. Uh, and uh, and uh, maybe we can exploit it. Peter is talking about late works uh, and, and all the complexity and depth uh, they kind of uh, potentially imply. 
uh, he's talking about slowness, uh, slow architecture. I think architecture is always slow. Uh, and, and in fact, it is both its greatness and its uh, problem in the current uh, context. So um, let's talk about urgent uh, issues. Uh, well, Rem, let's ask so a question. We both agree that uh, the marketplace, uh, we're all susceptible to it if we're asked to do a competition, uh, etc. Uh, I believe that architecture has gone astray be precisely because of media, uh, that everybody wants to do the latest thing. I mean, those things that you showed are totally outrageous. They have no critical value in terms of the discipline, so we agree about that. But I think they're brought about by this sense of urgency. One, that we are in late modernism and everybody wants to change. But there has been no political, social, or economic change. I mean, there's been no Marxism, no fascism, no ideology that has triggered something that would produce the next uh, modernism, let's say. And so people have this, are, are caught in this death rattle of, of an urgency to change without any change being possible. And I think that's what we see. Uh, I, I think we have to be very careful that we kind of generalize uh, our own situation. Uh, because I think that uh, if you talked about death rattle in China, uh, I think that uh, you would find uh, a very little resonance. Yes. Uh, if you would find uh, talk about lateness in Dubai, you would also find uh, very little resonance. And I think that uh, we are in a kind of paradoxical moment that uh, on the one hand uh, there is a global system uh, and I think that after the, let's say, current retreat from America from that whole situation, uh, which is uh, on the one hand a difficulty but on the other hand for many different cultures a really good thing because it enables them to find their own um, not level, but their own authenticity, perhaps, is a better word. Uh, less driven by uh, a kind of process of Americanization. Uh, so I think we have to be very careful uh, in terms of identifying our own crisis or our own problems uh, as kind of global problems. Because I think that the, the, the other paradigm is there already in a kind of very big way. And it hasn't reached America because it will probably never reach America. But the issue, huh? the issue, Rem, is that if you're telling me what we're witnessing in Dubai is a new paradigm, uh, I can't agree given the, the facts of building because they are also consumed by this death rattle of, of, of consumption. The Chinese, what they're doing in Shanghai, I believe, is, 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 is similar. So while they may be new governments, the, the, what their architectural forms take uh, are certainly uh, problematic in, in terms of uh, uh, what we see. I, I want to take one other point that you mm -hmm. make. Um, the, I've, I've just read Don DeLillo's The Falling Man. Again, I, I turn to literature to give me an insight into today. And the whole notion that the, ta the fear of the tower because of terrorism, right? Um, and uh, the fact that the terrorists attacked the Twin Towers, which was a symbol of capital in architecture. In other words, these were the tallest buildings. There had to be two of them, etc. The fact that the attack occurred a half hour apart as a media attack. I think that terrorism has in fact made an incredible change or will continue to have an incredible change on what happens in the physical form of our buildings. Yes, but doesn't that, don't you think that's a social change? Yeah. Don't you think there's a huge social, social change but, but, but that but manifests uh, itself in the question of people being able to communicate across and, 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 and to work together, which just, just didn't exist before. I mean, the kind of phenomenon I was trying to, uh, sorry about to use the yeah. word, uh, here in Montreal. Rem? Uh, I think the problem there, again, is that you kind of generalize from a local situation. I'm 100% sure that terrorism will not have any impact on any architecture, on any building, except in uh, North America. Really? I, I venture that, that hypothesis, and uh, I have a lot of evidence to, to, uh, to illustrate yes, it. Yes, but unfortunately, it's uh, changing and, and our social mores. 
you are yes, but, but yet, yeah, so, so this is the problem that uh, which I was kind of really saying uh, we, we have to we entered a different moment and, and, and I think that moment is fundamentally different in the sense that uh, modernization is a wave uh, and uh, the wave has kind of hit America perhaps in the first part of the 20th century Europe uh, more or less similarly uh, but now what, what I think all of us don't realize sufficiently is that we are no longer in charge of the uh, critical apparatus. We are no longer the, in the driving seat in terms of uh, steering architecture or conceptualizing architecture and kind of urbanism. Uh, we are, you know, at the most uh, semi-resentful kind of rear guard domain that that is perplexed uh, by the rest of the world and and in its perplexity uh, incapable of seeing uh, what is what, it's a very debased word perhaps what is new there or what could be new there let me ask you a question Rem. Um, and uh, i think that no i have to ask the the, the, model, the the novel you make the the, the little I, I think that yeah th that is for me the kind of worst kind of um American uh, naval contemplation. Can uh, I? Uh, uh, you, you know that I don't suffer that much. No, no, I know, I know that. I'm uh, not accusing you. Yeah, let, let's, let's talk about Ville Radios. Ville Radios was promised a social, uh, hygienic, uh, conceptual reform to the Ila Insalubre, the, the, the mm -hmm. city that didn't work um, for many number of reasons. There's nothing that I see because, and we all know the failures of uh, the Ville Radios in New York City, in, in uh, uh, St. Louis, Chicago, places all over the world where these slab buildings, tower buildings in, in, in isolated areas uh, didn't work. I've seen nothing in the images that you showed that told me that there was a new paradigm of the tall building, the slab building, that was any different than the failures that were in uh, Ville Radieuse. And that's what I'm asking. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, you, you can say I'm generalizing, but there were failures, the Ville Radieuse. And you know uh, that Leon Creer and Colin Rowe and the New Urbanists, which we are both uh, have a problem with, uh, continue to criticize us, you and me, for following the same kind of dogmatic view of the urban. Uh, especially Leon Creer, our nemesis, and how do we answer that? I, mean I, I think that um, it, it, it's, it's a very good example to, to start with the Ville Radios, because you and, and kind of probably in kind of architectural audience is your uh, kind of most secure uh, audience uh, for launching uh, such a theory. You think it's a failure, and, and of all things you uh, quote uh, St. Louis uh, as, as evidence. The, the fact is that the Corbusier model is operating uh, with incredible success uh, in in Asia, for instance. Well, these are uh, new, new, new cities, of versus old cities. Uh, not only new cities, difference. but the kind of a, a situation like Singapore is kind of based on the Villa Rogers. It has not a kind of single problem to assume it. It, has, it is inhabiting it with an incredible kind of Asian ingenuity uh, and, and sense of fun, uh, anthropologically unbelievably interesting. And we are still in this kind of elephantine consultation that it didn't work. Uh, it, you know, it, it's uh, an unbelievably simplistic um, statement to make at the moment that kind of probably 99% uh, of all current construction in the world is either slab or tower. Uh, uh, what are you saying? That, that doesn't no, no, work? Well, first of and, all, and is it in, yeah? Rem. So uh, uh, you uh, my, my operation, I, and I think what, what is interesting is to have a non-architectural look at those things, to uh, turn ourselves for a moment in kind of anthropologists and, and perhaps sociologists or politicians, and to see that then there is a kind of vastly different picture. I, I mean uh, the, uh, the question is, you're assuming and uh, I, I don't believe that my assessment of the Ville Radieuse is overly simplified, but let's assume that it is. Your assessment that just because it's happening in China to 99% of the area means that it's okay and going to produce a, a, a social system 
that is not hierarchical, that is, is more uh, open and expansive, et cetera, is pure speculation on your part. I mean, just because it's happening, you're assuming that the facts are that the market is allowing this to happen means it's okay. No, I don't no, think no, there's no, any no, proof no, of that. No. no. Uh, that, that's not at all what I'm doing. Can I, okay. in, in any case, it's kind of not about. In China, nothing is about the market. Kind of, uh, in America, things are about the market. Uh, China is a kind of state, as you know, with a kind of communist regime, uh, and and so I'm not saying that because it's happening, it must be okay. I'm saying I've seen what happens in there. And I personally think it is inhabited in a deeply authentic way that we kind of constantly underestimate because of the primitivity and kind of single-mindedness of our perspective. But of course, uh, Rem, you can't... And, and, and yeah. also, uh, and, and of course, what plays a major role, you know, if, if we don't introduce the quantitative in, in architecture, then we cannot kind of uh, discuss the values of cheapness, uh, we cannot discuss the value of, of uh, prefabrication of, of the generic. Yeah, but I think on a, a uh, basic social system, these are imposed systems. This is all Louis XIV again. It's coming from uh, top down. Right. And we have to, uh, in, in, in a society now, you can't work that way. And I keep on talking about the kind of Montreal model where it's from the bottom up. And it's not the bottom bottom, but I mean, it's certainly people in communities that work together to, uh, to achieve some sort of a thing. We're and your, your, your model is completely the old ruler, and I, I, I no. have, I, I, I'm horrified by it. Rem, let's ask a question. Um, uh, this is not, uh, I, I, we're doing a housing project in Tenerife for thousands of, of, of migrant workers. The, the, the uh, first sorry, so can I, can I just, yeah. I'm only making one comment. Yeah. You have kind of s cited examples from New York and, and St. Louis, and you are now quoting kind of Montreal against me. Yeah, I love New York, I love uh, St. Louis, uh, and I think its citizens have been incredibly smart to destroy their slabs. Uh, uh, I love Montreal for its bottom-up uh, activity, but I'm in, I, 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 I'm in a unfortunate kind of position uh, that I also know the rest of the world in certain parts, and that I think they're kind of slightly in contradiction uh, to your, the things you love. Well, and that I think without embracing the kind of authoritarianism of them, I think if you're interested in architecture and if you're interested in urbanism, I think it's very important that you look at those areas at the moment that they are developing and have the initiative of modernization in their hands. If you are building there, th they're building from, again, the top down. It's not, it's not communities, it's not people, it's an imposition, and this is the problem. I don't see that that's a solution, finally. Maybe to get things going, the way democracy is not a way to get anything going. You always have to have somebody with a strong arm. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, maybe it's the only possibility one has for building large, large uh, projects, but I don't think that the project that you're doing in Santiago, that is much more of a kind of, thing from, from, from society coming up. I, I don't know if it is or not. I, I, th I think that, uh, sorry, I, I'm really, I want to be adamant kind of from a political point of view. If you kind of describe China as monolithic, then you underestimate a number of things. You underestimate that it's... I'm not th saying it's been monolithic, you were saying that. No, no. no. Sorry. Can no, I, yeah. you're, you're describing it as Man, a kind of could we could yeah. we get away from the political like you want to yeah. and talk about the architectural? Um, you proposed a model of uh, urbanism in your Lavalette project. I see no resonance in your late work. Have you abandoned that? I mean, I'm just now internally architecture, whether it's mm -hmm. China, Dubai, I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's another model that you're ta the, the, that you're talking about? that replaces that, I'd really be interested to know. Or do you think it's still a valid model? I, 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 th I think that um, La Villette uh, is, remains one of my kind of favorite uh, kind of projects. Unfavorite? Uh, favorite, favorite. favorite. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not crazy. Yeah, uh, 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 and, and, but it was a project for a socialist government that was just in power. 
that kind of bankrupted the state uh, and that had uh, uh, a completely overheated project of which La Villette was a kind of beautiful illustration. Kind of it couldn't be a kind of better illustration of that particular moment right. of, of kind of socialist euphoria in France. Uh, and we uh, completely supported it and, and identified ourselves with that uh, uh, moment. Uh, and so it's kind of in the catalog uh, to be revived at any moment where it would be relevant and still in kind of latent ways appearing and, and reappearing in, in different forms of camouflage or disguise in, in, in all our work. But uh, I am only saying that uh, there are very few of those, and particularly in the current uh, kind of market economy, very few of those kind of wonderful, euphoric, irresponsible moments. And, and it's therefore not me who is changing their mind, but, but uh, a, a, a number of aspects about the conditions in which architecture is produced today that, that uh, have an influence and that I want to theorize. Yeah, and th that's my only commitment to, that, to, to those new situations. It's not a political commitment, but uh, a need to theorize them and see how one can operate yeah. within them. Yeah? Let me ask you another question. I, I don't mean to be the moderator, no, but I, I, uh, there, uh, because uh, you talk about the need to theorize uh, urban models, which I would love dearly for you to do. What, what is your feeling about the relevance today of Ungers' Green Archipelago uh, for the social situations that you find in, in China? Uh, to, just to, to talk to the audience, the Green Archipelago was a, an interpretation of the decay of Berlin uh, and, and um, a project that proposed to use decay creatively and to condemn certain parts of the city and even erase them uh, so that uh, what would remain would be kind of significant architectural and kind of social complexes. Huh? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. I think that if, if you talk about urgency, um, the, the problem of is a quantitative urgency. You, you know kind of probably all the statistics that kind of China, uh, in one percentage of shift of the kind of countryside to the city, means that they have to create uh, one percent probably a city of 10 million people oh, right. every year. So in that sense. Uh, decay is, is not a kind of viable part of the repertoire uh, uh, in, in a similar way. And, and so that is my only kind of statement that we, we simply talk as architects as, as if we are the center of the world, uh, even though we are currently speaking from a shrinking territory with kind of very few pressures to expand. Uh, with very few pressures to renew, uh, with very, uh, and there's a, of course a cultural pressure to renew kind of constantly, but in terms of buildings or in terms of architecture, very little. Uh, but architecture but never, I mean, if we talk about a new city for 10 million people, architects traditionally maybe did 1% of, 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 of the work anyway, and uh, if they got 1%, that would be fine. Um, and they're in a better position today because of media to assert uh, a certain power over image, icon, mm -hmm. uh, and other issues that are important symbols to a city than they were. Uh, can, can we talk about, uh, do we have more power today? Because it, uh, I had a question for you, uh, actually, if we may refer. When you worked on Seagram, do you think what kind of power did Mies have then compared to what we have at the moment? I was assured that he had all the power in the world. All the power in yes. the world. So uh, the, only, the only change was that uh, there was, a, uh, there was a, a budget, but he's always worked with the budget, but it was so completely different. The kind of issue that you had to build to the full, full uh, envelope of the city was not a consideration, okay? There was just none of that at that time. And, and the fact You mean the law didn't exist or he was above the law? Pardon? Did the laws not exist? Because I think that zoning laws did exist. No, but no, was no, he no, above the no, law? No, no, no. The, the, the Seagram did not uh, request that. That's all. There was no, no, the, nobody felt any need for it. There was not, there was not that attitude at that time. We always read back from today into what happened. Then hmm. architecture was a non.
question at that time. No way. You know, there was just none. And so, but I assured that Mies was able to build the building that he wanted to build. I was the client. And so, but, you know, today it's a very, very different thing. If I were uh, building that building today, I would have to deal with a lot more people and a lot more issues than I did then. But, Phyllis, going back to that building, you're forgetting that there was a lot of discussion about a liquor company, a private liquor company breaking. No, no, there was a discussion, uh, Ada Louise Huxtable among them, uh, of, of setting back from the street line of Park Avenue. Should a building be allowed to set back? There was a, a social discussion about the symbolism of setting back that building. Fire the city, the, cha the city put in a, a bylaw in uh, four years later that required that uh, the cities, uh, th that uh, you, you, they didn't require that allowed people to put plazas in right. and things like that. That changed the face of New York. It, it so Ada Louise could say what she wanted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Fortunately, she's still saying it. Unfortunately. She did good work in the, uh, in the 60s. Uh, uh, do, do you think that uh, everybody seems to having a stalled at this point? Uh, Mirko, do you think that people might like to have, ask questions from the floor? Be fine. Yeah. We can take this. Oh, he has one. Okay. He has one. Okay. Perfect. I think that uh, there are a few times left, uh, and short ten minutes. We can take uh, some questions. If you have, otherwise I can start to ask. Do you have some questions? <laughs> Do you have no, some questions? I, well, I don't know. Well, perhaps you have to come here if you have any question, because the microphone is here in the meantime. Please come. And while you're coming, I just want to say one thing. Rem has built some of the most beautiful icons in the world, okay? <laughs> so I'm not trying to... To say that uh, I share this kind of feel of urgency, otherwise I was not calling this urgency. In not in the sense that you are saying, Peter, because it's not the problem to be fast uh, or uh, to be lateness. It is to recognize that uh, the world is changing. And I would like to underline the point of REM. is changing and it's, we are not anymore the center. And if we do not recognize that, I feel that whatever we do is losing a, a, the perspective in which we are. I, I, I have to answer that. There, there are two kinds of medical practitioners, um, Mirko. There are medical practitioners that go to Africa and are on the front Come lines on. Of, of work on AIDS, you know, curing AIDS patients in Africa. There are other uh, doctors trying to find a vaccine, etc., in a laboratory. Right, who work very slowly towards a cure. I believe there are two kinds of architects. There are architects who are concerned with the, the discipline in keeping it alive, not having it have the fate of, of uh, Latin and Greek as a, as a live language. Um, I think that keeping architecture alive is something that has to occur internally and uh, if I have a choice between how I can be effective, if you said to me, here's a city for 10 million people in China, uh, I run back into my discipline of architecture because that's where I'm safe and I know what I'm doing. And I believe both are relevant. There's not one more relevant than the other. I can't operate on a city of 10 million people. I wouldn't know what to do. And so I don't think there's an urgency. I think, there, uh, you know, I think in my life there ain't no ur urgency at all in that sense. I got a lot to do uh, and I got a lot of time to do it. <laughs> and one of the things I never will do, mark my words, is go to China. Well, <laughs> it's not I've point. never been. To, to think that you're not anymore the same does not mean that you have to do a political interpretation of architecture. And also, but we can continue the conversation after, yeah. I'm very slow too. So uh, can you say uh, your name? Uh, I would yeah. like to respond. I think it's a yeah, very, uh, very uh, kind of nice metaphor. You either a researcher in uh, Sloan Kettering, or you are uh, in the bush in Africa healing, presumably locals. Uh, uh, 
but, uh, but I think it's also kind of terrifyingly kind of simplistic opposition because it always pre is presumably uh, the research it has to be fed by new uh, by confronting new conditions because what, what is otherwise the kind of point? I no, agree. no, but I think that can you kind of work on the discipline in isolation or can you only renew the discipline by uh, uh, confronting the, uh, the conditions that have not, have never challenged the discipline before? Uh, that, that is okay, back okay, up. Yeah? We have some yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to okay. say. Okay. And, and one of the challenges is the 10 million citizens. May I tell you yeah? to say Don't that ask. these conditions today have never confronted architecture before is the first overly simplistic remark that you've made today uh, because we have always faced as the world was smaller uh, all of these problems always seem to be irrevocably crisis true I do not believe in crisis because crisis is what sustains the status quo and and crying crisis and urgency all the time we are not in a moment of crisis uh, we'll be in a moment of crisis if, if terror strikes again or a black death or whatever, but we are not in a, you know, in, in, in a moment of crisis. And to say we are is perpetuating a, a, an idea that leads to no change at all. But anyway. Look, let, uh, I think that you can, uh, can you come up. You can you tell your name. Yes. You better have a damn good question. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, uh, my name is Anis. I was told to say my name. And um, as a student here at, uh, in Montreal studying civil engineering, we we're going towards industrial design. I think it's a fascinating d discussion. There's a question for all three, actually. Um, Mr. Kula has had an excellent point about uh, icons and maybe having something to do with uh, over cluttering uh, the urban environment with icons and sort of visual glitter and. Uh, with respect to taking that into a larger context and to materialism and uh, in, in general, what would be the social or the potential social repercussions of, let's say, staying with the status quo and then continuing to sort of flood uh, the urban environment with you know more and more of this sort of very typical architecture that we've been seeing and not trying to break barriers and think in different ways as both of you have have suggested. What would be, in, in your opinions, all three of you? The, the repercussions of sort of just leaving things the way they are? Well, that would be the uh, um, uh, new urbanist, Leon <laughs> Creer point of view, which is a status quo that uh, projects hierarchy, that projects uh, segregation, that projects all kinds of, of, of things that one is uh, uh, against. And, and oh, it's, it's entropy. It's, it's, yeah, and so I, I mean, for me, um, uh, Creer is the embodiment of the enemy. I mean, in other <laughs> words, he is, you know, he's with the brightest guy that I know, uh, and he's also, for me, a, 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 an embodiment of evil. And I've always tried to find ways of, of counteracting his discourse. He uh, respects Rem, he respects me, but he finds what we do and we teach intolerable, okay? And I don't believe that it is possible, uh, I teach uh, Renaissance architecture. That doesn't mean I want to build Renaissance architecture today. Uh, and I think that what you find, I think students are as good a marketplace, Rem, as uh, China or Dubai, because the students know the difference between signing up for a Rem Koolhaas or a Leon Creer or Peter Eisenman. They don't want uh, Leon Creer. Uh, they, they, they're constantly asking me, could you teach me how to do Zaha Hadid, right? Now, that's where the student mind is. Uh, how do you do that and what is its value? So the status quo <coughs> can never continue forward. So there is other questions there? Yeah. yeah. There's somebody else. Oh, excuse me, there was this person, then you, and then you. Please come up. I'm Samar. 
I really wanted to know your um, opinion on uh, having a birth of architects union or a kind of builders union, anyone who build anything on earth, locally first and then internationally. And this actually will help architects to afford to refuse, I think. This is something that we don't talk about. It. I mean, it's hard to refuse if you, if you don't build, then how are you going to live? So um, isn't that something missing now, that we're in the mode of competition more than really serving humanity or, our, or architecture and what is expected from us? Thanks. No, what I is the question? Do you like it? Uh, no, no, you tell me, Mirko, you heard no, it. I, look, uh, if you don't understand an English question, how can I understand I'm Italian? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a French question, so I mean, <laughs> that's why I didn't understand Right, perhaps you could, uh, this idea of uh, are you asking whether, uh, uh, let's say, a kind of more professional organization of the profession would enable us to make a stronger position uh, and, and you presumably mean a kind of political organization of the profession. Is that the question? Sorry for being unclear. I mean professionally. If we have locally first unions that um, students of architecture come out and they go to these unions and um, every project in the city goes into the union instead of putting it in the competition and architects in front of each other killing each other for that project you know helping each other getting that project okay. and then <laughs> having their own architectural values um, imposed on the project rather than you know being in discussions with each other all the time mm. that's all thank you um, may, I, may I give you a, a a word about reality. <laughs> Next to top chefs, which are the most <laughs> egocentric and narcissistic people I have ever met, uh, <laughs> architects are second, right? <laughs> and if you think that there would be a top chefs union uh, where they would divide up uh, the world or an architects union where the most egocentric and narcissistic people in the world uh, are, you're wrong. And number two, to be a great architect, you have to be egocentric and narcissistic. And if you ain't, join a union. Uh, can I try to give a utopian answer? Uh, oh. uh, 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 there have been actually in the kind of recent history uh, exactly those uh, bodies, unions of architects. Uh, and uh, I want to quote only one example, uh, a union of uh, modern architects in uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, that uh, collected and collected in the early 20s, from the 20s to the 30s, uh, absolutely the most important uh, architects uh, of that moment, working collectively on a kind of repertoire of both forms and institutions uh, that uh, created an enormous leap in terms of understanding the connection between society and architecture, to, to put it uh, carefully. Uh, and so uh, that kind of uh, uh, prototype, it, it, those unions, as far as I know, and I know quite well because I have done a lot of research uh, in it, didn't uh, suffer from any conflict of uh, temperaments, uh, but it was a kind of genuine uh, uh, sense of momentary solidarity uh, uh, in a field that didn't have to compete for the simple reason that the area and the territory, the open territory in front of them was so wide and the questions were so new and the um, possibilities also technically were so uh, revolutionary that kind of for once you know, the total amount of invention needed kind of exceeded the uh, assembled geniuses. 
So I think uh, it, it simply depends on the field you you want to uh, explore, and I think that that is kind of indirectly, you know, a critique of the kind of current moment that, that we need to explore those fields because that is where the renewal will come from. Thank That's you. Absolutely. I want to uh, make a. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to make an ironic PS uh, to Rem's uh, research um, in that the slide that Rem showed of the seven towers in Moscow, which he uh, has a great affection for, was done by a leader who took those very same architects that joined a union and put them in gulags in the late 30s. Well, uh, on the so one hand, uh, 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 this is a different right. union. Black sorry. Black. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, I'm sorry, only the three more, and that's all. Hi, good morning. My name is Brent. Uh, my question kind of connects to hers, too, I think. Uh, it's based out of a study that was, a major study was done uh, about five years, just released about, it was a psychological profile study of American high school students. And what the results showed was, two things that really disturbed the, them the most. And number one was a, a spike in three year, four, four, four or five years of uh, American students' sense of self-entitlement. And two was a huge spike in narcissism. And it really concerned them deeply enough that they're trying to figure out what to do about it. And so it's not just something that's affecting uh, big scale architecture and developers like Dubai, but it's also affecting small scale. I mean. Uh, it's the world we live in. They think it has to do with uh, such a saturation of media. Do you think in a small scale problem, say architecture as a high school and architects as high school students, uh, <laughs> is there anything that, is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? What should be done about it? Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's more interesting comment than, than a question. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, Julia Burke, um, architect and board member of the Canada Green Building Council. Um, I think when we talk about urgency, there's an elephant in the room that we haven't mentioned, and that's the issue of sustainability, in particular environmental sustainability. And I would ask you both uh, to address that question, how you see the environmental crisis. Sustainability, so far, sustainability, um, sustainability, 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 sustainability. <laughs> uh, so far, as far as I can tell by the pulse of the audience, I ain't on a bad wicket, and you ain't going to get me to answer that question because I ain't going to get an applause from this audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, um, I think that uh, there is not an architect in the world who hasn't uh, kind of wrestled with that issue. Uh, there's not an engineer in the world who uh, doesn't know fundamentally how uh, it has to be handled. Uh, I think uh, there is not uh, a person in the world who doesn't want to cloak themselves in a kind of aura of goodness and kind of progressiveness. Uh, uh, but uh, I think the, to introduce the issue of sustainability now as if it is requiring of all of us uh, a kind of oath of good behavior, <laughs> uh, even though uh, most of us have been kind of behaving extremely well in that area uh, for a very long time and being fundamentally interested in it kind of for a very long time is a bit uh, dubious uh, for me. Yeah. Just yeah. I think it's for the public huh? to push. I think it's for the public to push the cities yeah. uh, so, so yeah. that that gets done because otherwise yeah. it's not, nothing's going to happen. I agree. There are some also controversies about issue. that. Just one point that uh, next Friday there will be a seminar at CCA, sustainability, question mark, of course. And I think there is another question. Come up. Hi, I'm Anik. Um, seeing all the projects you presented, yours and 
those BCZ projects. I was interesting, interested in knowing how you would define spectacular because you seem to make a difference between certain projects and others in that matter. Yeah. And I was wondering in your mind what was exactly the difference I, because I, I find your projects pretty spectacular too. I, I will tell you what the difference is. Um, and you have to have some internal knowledge of architecture to be able to, because superficially the shapes look the same. What REM is able to do and I am able to do with some authority is to tell the difference between projects which contribute to the critical nature of the discipline, which expand the discipline even though they have a spectacular look, have internally a, a, a value which those projects which just copy the look have no internal value at all. I think that's the difference between an A project and a B project and I think those architects that have achieved an A status have worked hard to understand what that might be and how that evolves and those other architects are just copy magazines and copy what they see. So there is an enormous difference. It's like reading the difference between a Tom Robbins that you buy in a newsstand in the airport, which is a book in a hardcover, and an Ian McEwan. Uh, people can tell the difference. Uh, one is literature and one is just pop nonsense, right? Uh, and you, and the same in architecture. They may look the same, they may have the same cover, but they ain't. <laughs>